Here's a great example of something I do with a lot of YouTube creators or people who create videos for Instagram or wherever. So today we're gonna continue working with Miguel and what we're doing is we're working on a script. We found that we were working on one script more than three different things and really getting in deep with this one script that he will be able to use to publish on his YouTube channel to start growing his coaching business. So I hope you enjoy this. I hope that you are able to watch it and not just listen to it. And I hope that you get a lot out of this in today's session, just like Miguel did. Hi, I'm Max and Coach Bianca, and I'm here to help you because you might not know this, but your voice is your choice when it comes to your accent in English. I try to release a podcast episode every other week, and you can subscribe and get the show notes wherever you get your podcasts. And by the way, that includes YouTube for the full video version. Now let's get on with the show. Hey, Miguel, how have you been? Hey, Bianca, I'm very good. It's awesome. always nice to see you. Yeah, it's always great to see you. We're going to talk today about something that you're preparing actually for another group. And it's actually where I know you from. So it's always nice to see you. I think, when did we see each other? Was it yesterday? Yeah, because we were on the on like this meeting that we used to have every week. Yeah, 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 yeah. And for me, it's a little bit, how should I say? I'm in your shoes when I'm there on Thursdays because I'm using that meeting to practice my Spanish. And so you get to see me very vulnerable mm. and you get to see all the mistakes <laughs> that I'm making in Spanish. And now the no. tables are turned. So we're going to look at your mistakes today. And I'm going to try to help you out with that. And you're working on three things I think you have in mind today. One is some vocabulary questions and kind of random questions. Another thing is maybe a reel that you want to produce for yourself and prepare that. And then the third thing is the story that we're doing for our group, correct? Those are the three things you want to yeah. cover today? Okay, awesome, awesome. Before we do the random questions, random vocabulary list, can you tell us a little bit about what you're going to be using the reel for? Can you tell people a little bit more about what you do and how our meetings together is helping you? So uh, I deal a lot with technology. Most of my life I've been working on computers and this kind of, of stuff. And mostly my day job is to create like these scripts. Or those are called scripts, but are, are actually like instructions for the computers so that they perform tasks in a very quick way or like in an automated, uh, automated way. Mm -hmm. So these kind of reels that I, I am going to be producing are like around those kind of topics. But mostly what I am going to focus in, in the next, uh, maybe like a year, is that I want to enter like this field of coaching, but on technology, right? I, I want to be able to give like my insights and also my help to people that are struggling with technology. And it can be anything like maybe simple for me, but, but like things from Zoom, like configuring the, the way that your classroom probably in, in like a teacher uh, kind of thing uh, so it performs the way that it's more efficient and, and most practical for you and they can be also complex th things that also can be in the field of art and music or video which I am also I've been doing that a lot and there are a lot of tools in, in those kind of fields and a lot of complex technology which is also tough to control and make these workflows that allow you to move very, very fast and make work yeah, easier and faster. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the, the story that I have. I just began preparing this like short video or reel for comparing or for trying to show some weaknesses around stable diffusion and Photoshop and mid journey, which are these kind of technologies that revolve around generative AI, but on the context of images. So this is going to be like a video showing one of its uh, most prominent weakness, which is hands. These mo models that create images are not very good at drawing hands. And that's because these models were not trained a lot on, on hands. And also because hands are this complex structure, which is always changing. It's a very tough problem for these computations to, to be able to do it uh, in a great way. But the great news is that there are some new techniques that are very recent, like one called control net for stable diffusion. It needs a very technical thing, but it's also becoming super easy to control and try to create like actually perfect hands or perfect poses for the body and in control that. So the thing that comes out from the, yeah, from these generations is actually predictable and you can 
like really control what comes out of it, not only with words, but also with poses. Ah, yeah. so already, like me being a non-technical person, I can tell that not only do you have like a list of vocabulary that you already want to go over, but my guess is when we go through the script, we're going to find a lot more vocabulary to add to that. So is it okay with you if we start with the script then for that? Yeah. Reel? yeah okay, that, let's do that then. Good. All right, perfect. I'm going to share your screen, your page of these three things. And I'm going to go from the top to the bottom. I love the title. Help me, Bianca. And we're going to skip these vocabulary words for now. Maybe add a couple spaces because I know we're going to add to it. And let's talk about this short video or reel. You have some bullet points here. To me, well, at least how I work. When I make a script, if it's a reel, I'll write out a script for myself. And then I'll use um, a little teleprompter on my camera to make sure that I keep it under one minute because I have a tendency to go off. When I just have bullet points, I'll just keep talking and talking. So for you, do you feel like this is going to be the final script or do you feel like it's just ideas right now? It's not finished, but I believe I, I am better with working with a complete script because I have the same issue that I keep keep and keep and, t- and keep talking. Mm-hmm. And especially in English, I feel like if I don't have this prepared, it's going to be worse, especially at the way that I pronounce things. Yeah, definitely. So probably word for word. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. So we'll prepare it in such a way that that you've you've got all the words down. You don't have to think about like, oh, I got to make some stuff up here and I don't feel comfortable ad-libbing on there. So we'll we'll say that this is going to be our script. And um, for the people who are just listening to this episode, this audio episode only, it's going to be difficult to follow along. So we're going to put our link in the show notes so people can follow along. And if they're watching this on YouTube, then they're going to be able to see me sharing my screen right now. It's going to be a little bit easier for, for them to follow along. So just saying that for people who are just audio listening and you might get a little bit lost in here. So let's start at the top and I'm just going to highlight some of these words. We'll do a bit at a time and we'll just make sure everything is okay. And when we need to, we're going to switch to my app that I have where I can kind of visualize corrections for people, right? So if there's a problem with a vowel, we can mark that. If intonation sounds weird, we can mark that too. And then we can give you a copy of that kind of picture of visualizing those corrections to the mistakes. How's that for you? That sounds awesome. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So let's go through this first just once and give people an idea of what we're talking about here and maybe kind of define some of these terms for people who are listening and also for me because I might not know all these terms and what you're talking about at first. That'll get us a little more comfortable with the content and then we'll take that copy and paste over to our app and make those corrections. Okie doke? Yeah. All right. Awesome. Awesome. So just read through some of these words to give us an idea and I'm not going to stop you. I'm not going to interrupt you. And um, I just want you to go all the way to the end over here. So just read through this a little bit, uh, just to give us a a better idea of what we're talking about. Photoshop, Mid Journey, Dolly, and Stable Diffusion. You can create almost anything with those new AI tools. For example, the Pope in a Balenciaga code. That's easy. Darth Vader, Ice Fishing. Check. So in this part, I was going to show Mm -hmm. image that video. Yeah, yeah. You're going to do some inserts there, like photos or little video clips. Gotcha. Yeah. The next one is a teddy bear made of spaghetti. You got it. Mm -hmm. We often think that these technologies can do it all, but they all share one big limitation. Hands. And it's actually not only hands, but also poses. These generative AI models for images have a difficulty with representing and generating hands or limbs as they haven't been trained on enough of... uh, They haven't been trained enough on these features, so asking them to generate... Oh, sorry. I, the, the, oh, yeah, I, that's I, a little I, bit I, too I, small for you. Hold on. How's that? Better? These generative AI models for images have a difficulty with representing and generating heads or limbs as they haven't been trained on enough, as they haven't been trained enough on these features. So asking them to generate such images can lead to confusing and inaccurate results. Huh, so maybe inaccurate is a tough one for me to, to, to <laughs> I, I put it. Yes, you're discovering I this. It, I think that's why it's always really yeah, yeah. important to just go through it at first. We call that a, a like a dry read in the very first time or cold read sometimes when you go through it and you're like, oh, boy, this doesn't read as well as it did in my <laughs> head, <laughs> right? When it comes yeah, out, it's yeah. like, oh, wait, I'm stumbling over that, even though it's a word I might know really well. So these cold reads are really important just to get the gist of things and to see what might cause some troubles as well. What about that last line? Last line is, hands in particular are, are highly vers- versatile, capable of changing poses and angles fluidly. So it's a tougher problem to generate them perfectly. 
Yeah, there so, we go. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the video will continue from that part, but it's going to be a lot of technical stuff, which uh -huh. I, I am not I am not so sure if I have to prepare it first mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or maybe I can add leave it or, or mm -hmm. revise it while mm -hmm. I'm on the computer doing like the actual workflow. But we can review this first part, which Perfect. I feel like it's the most important one. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. open, right? Yeah. And, and when you say real or short video, to me, I think, wow, I literally just did like eight reels today. And to me, that's already probably a minute. So you might think like, <laughs> oh, this is going to be a short video. But then I might actually cut a reel out of that too, you know? So yeah, I don't know if you have a good sense of like how long a minute is and how fast you want to go or what your pace wants to be for a minute. But to me, that's at least a minute right there. Just to know, just to know. I'll show you a tool that I use. First, copy and paste your script here on our on our app and make it a little bit bigger so that you can see that. And I wanted to show you too, there's a, a tool that I use. This is actually the one that I use to see how long is this gonna be. Now I have a pretty good sense, but the teleprompter that I use is called bigview.tv. And I like it because it does a teleprompter on your phone. So if you're making videos on your phone, then it, it turns the whole screen just into a little teleprompter, which is fabulous. And you can also use it on the laptop as well or the desktop. So here's an example of one that I was doing today. And maybe you can see at the top that it says how many words you've got and the duration that it's going to take you. So I know that I go a little bit faster than what it says. So I know that if it says that my script here is going to be a minute and seven seconds, I can guarantee you I can do it in like 59 seconds. So I know that and then I can kind of save it and then it'll go to my phone and I'll do it that way. So that might be a tool that you're interested in. You can use the free version for that. So that's how I do that's it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's a really good one. So let's go through this now. I'm sharing the screen with your script on here and it doesn't always do the formatting. So I want to make sure that I've got the three bullet points here. They were these three, correct? The Pope, yes. Darth Vader, and a teddy bear, correct? Yeah. All right, perfect. So now let's do this again. It's not a cold read. People have an idea of what we're talking about, even if they don't know what all of this is about. So before we correct the pronunciation, can you, I think most people know Photoshop, but can you tell people what Mid Journey, Dolly, and Stable Diffusion are just so that people who are listening along they have a better understanding of what you're going to be talking about. So Mid Journey, Dolly, and Stable Diffusion those are called actually models, but I, I like to think about those like as if they are technologies that allow mm -hmm. you basically you can generate images with those, mm -hmm. and you can generate those images by writing to the computer, like telling the computer please make this image for me. Like directing the computer as if you were a, like a creative director and you're like trying to make your design people probably or your your people that work in illustration to cre generate and create this specific image you, you have in mind. Okay, that's yeah. perfect. Yeah. So you're looking at creating images. You're making a reel on telling people how to create images and what the current problem is with that right now, which is hands, or maybe not current problem, but one challenge is hands. So let's go through these word for word or line by line. Let's say, give me this line again, and I'm going to make some corrections, and then we'll go over those corrections. You ready? Okay, I'm ready. Photoshop, Me Journey, Dolly, and Stable Diffusion. Okay, there we go. I'm going to make a couple corrections here. So maybe because Spanish is your first language, you sometimes have trouble with what we call diphthongs, two sounds. You're cutting it down to one. So you're saying photo, photo, and I want photo, photo, O okay. and O. I'm going to mark like this, photo. I'll make sure your jaw is moving. Photo, photo, photo. photo. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Photoshop. Photoshop. Mm. Photoshop. And you can go a little faster, but make sure that your jaw is moving. Photo, photo, Photoshop. Photoshop. Yeah, Photoshop. exactly. This sounds good. So you were telling us a little bit about the maybe some definitions about mid journey and dolly and stable diffusion being technologies. So I'd like you to read that first line again. I'm sharing my screen again for people who can't see that. Maybe they're listening just audio only. And this first line, we want to see what corrections we can make. So go ahead and read that whole line again. Photoshop, Mid Journey, Dolly, and Stable Diffusion. There you go. I just want to reiterate for those O sounds. In Spanish, I know you don't have as many or as common diphthongs, meaning two vowels together. So I'm going to mark those O, O. Make sure your jaw's moving. Photoshop. Oh, so on the second uh -huh. O, it's also photo. Yes, both of those are O, O. This last O, because O's are super tricky in English, this last one is ah, uh, as in box. Photoshop, Photoshop. Photoshop, Photoshop. Photoshop. Mm -hmm. And you could also do this one as well, ah, ah, shop. But I do shop, ah, ah, 
shop. So that's what we Photoshop. call a merger. Some people do awe. Some people do awe. And I do awe in this case. So photo again. Photoshop. There Photoshop. we go. Your mid journey sounded perfect. Your Dali sounded perfect. What I might do here in Dali, do you happen to know, because it's more your field than mine, do they say, I'm going to give you three options. I'm thinking about syllable stress here. Do they say Dali, Dali, or do they maybe stress both? Dali. Do you happen to know? I've heard most, mostly the first one. Okay. Dali. Where the first syllable is stressed. Okay. I don't know the answer to that. To me, generally, when we do constructions like this, often it's the second one. For example, I say television, but I say TV. Do you see what I mean? So I yeah, was yeah. expecting Dali, like the painter. <laughs> but yeah, in this yeah. case, maybe they're stressing the first one to actually differentiate that from the painter, right? Because it's kind of a play on words. So let's make that a little bit stronger. Say this one again with the first syllable stressed more. Dali, Dali, Dali. Actually, I think like I prefer to say the second way because ah. I, I believe that they created that name specific, specifically trying to refer to the to the painter. Ah. So it's probably Dali. That's, right. Okay, let's mark that then. Dali, 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 Dali. Say that a couple times then. Dali, but I am not sure why some people are saying like Dali. Dali. Mm. Uh, Maybe it's just yeah. still a new word and we haven't quite worked out what we want to say. You know what I mean? Like when stuff is new, people don't really agree. The left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. So after a while, something's going to win. It's either going to be Dali or Dali. We don't know yet, but you have your preference. So let's use your preference so that your videos are at least consistent. Okay, cool. So So you're going to do Dali. Dali, Dali, right? Dali, Dali, Dali. Dali, Dali. Dali, Dali, Dali. Dali. And then this one, since I just mentioned the word TV, that Z as in television. I want that Z here as well. Diffusion. Z, z. Diffusion. Z. Diffusion. Put your hand right here on your throat and see if you're making some vibration. Z. Z. Oh, so, so see that? Diffusion. Oh, there we that, go. That z, z. Z. Yeah, you went from z. Z. like this stuff right uh-huh. when I begin to do, to do this. Exactly. Diffusion. You can feel it. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, can, I find that's I not so common in Spanish. I think that's why. There's a pair of sounds. One is unvoiced. If I want you to be quiet, I'm going to say shh, right? But this is the one I'm looking for. It's the same as shh, but you need vibration here. Diffusion. There, yeah. perfect, perfect. Diffusion. Like television. Television. Diffusion. Yeah, you can feel it, right? Here's a little mm-hmm. exercise you can do for that. And what we're talking about is two pairs. One is what we call voiced and the other one is unvoiced. So here's an exercise you can do for any voiced or unvoiced pairs. Let me list them right here. Think about first a P as in pay me money or party, right? Party. Put your hand on your throat again and you should not be vibrating there. Right? If you're vibrating, you're making a B sound. Baby. Baby. Party. Controlling your voice, your your vocal folds right there in your voice box. That's a really interesting skill. It's a difficult skill if your language doesn't really differentiate it too much. And I feel like Spanish doesn't always care if it's voiced or unvoiced. For example, at the end of the word, or especially whenever I see the letter Z, at least in Mexican Spanish, to me, they're never voicing Z. They're always pronouncing, at least in Mexico, the letter Z like an S sound. So S, S, right? Depends on where you are. I know Spain is different. Maybe Ecuador is different. But at least here, their voicing isn't very clearly defined for me. So here's an exercise you can do for this one for F like Friday and V like victory. And this one that we're doing, which is shh and zh, shh, that's the symbol for shh, kind of like a stick with some hooks. And this is the one for zh, zh. So this exercise doesn't work for p, p, b, b. But try this. Take a deep breath. And when you let it out, you're going to start unvoiced. Let's do the one we just did. Shh. I already heard you do this. So I want you to do it on purpose. Ready? So I'm going to do halfway. I'm going to switch. I'm going to go shh, shh, Can you do that in one breath? Switch from unvoiced to voice. Can you turn it on? Shh. Yeah, that's a hard one. If you can do yeah, that in good. one breath, you're going to be golden, right? That's a lot of control. It's a little easier with this one. Do it with the first one. S- there you go. Now you got it. Try it with the F and the V. 
Mm. Mm. Yeah, perfect, perfect. That's an exercise you can do like in the shower, walking your dogs, whatever, right? Try to control your vocal folds to turn them off and on. You can do them both ways. So you could do all in the same breath, right? If you can do that, you're, that's going to be awesome. But I'm gonna, I, I think I can yeah. do it, but it's like super new. Like, <laughs> Like right. Who's, who does that? Nobody does that except like <laughs> people like who work with me. So I'm going to mark that. I'm going to call it voicing exercise. That's so that will yeah. hopefully remind you. And if you forget that, just send me a message and I'll remind you or make a quick video of what to do there. So, OK. Awesome. So now we've got one, two, three, four terms here in our first line. Can you read all four again, seeing if you can remember those corrections? Photoshop, Mid Journey, Dali. And the stable diffusion. There we go. That's so, perfect. I feel like I have to, to exaggerate it. For, yeah, for like totally. It's going to take learn. a while for that muscle memory to kick in and to remember. And that's why I think scripts are really good for people when they're first doing this or if they're doing something in another language. Like, I don't make reels in other languages, partly because I think it might come off a little weird. I guess I could try. Maybe that's a new challenge for me. But I totally get where you're <laughs> coming from because I would have to practice those reels like a hundred times and record myself every <laughs> time to see if I could hear that. So we get the first one. That's done. Now, you've got these examples. You were talking about the Pope. And Darth Vader, I'm just going to give that a capital V for Vader. And I don't know this kind of coat. What kind of coat is that? So there is this image of the Pope. Yeah. Like it's on a big coat. The Balenciaga is like this brand of top. Maybe I'm wrong. But ah, like is, it, is it this puffy, puffy white clothing. jacket kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. Now I got you. I just didn't know the name of that. So I'm going to put that in a capital too, just to say like, this is a specific thing, um, you know, a proper noun. So, okay. Awesome. Awesome. I love your parallelism here. You've got example, comment, example, comment, example, comment. I think that's a really nice format to have. And just to keep it consistent, awesome. I'm going to make it visually consistent by putting in a period and a capital letter. Okay. So let's read from you can create all the way to you got it. You ready? Okay. You can create almost anything with those new AI tools. The Pope in a Balenciaga coat, easy. Darth Vader ice fishing, check. A teddy bear made of spaghetti, you got it. Nice. I only have a couple things I want to add to this, and I'm being a little bit picky. So remember that S to Z thing? I'm going to oh, mark yeah. those here. Tools. Tools. Uh huh. Easy. 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 Perfect. Easy. Perfect. Easy. And then one thing I want to check, but first, the syllable stress in the food you might have for dinner. Can you say this word again? Spaghetti. Ah, that's I was just checking. Great. I want to check the syllable stress there, and it should be on the second one. Get, get, spaghetti. 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 You can say spa, or you can say spa, right? Both of those vowels are fine for that one. Spaghetti. I just want that syllable stress to pop a little bit more. Great. And I want to check one other thing. Say this word and this word again. Anything and mm -hmm. fishing. Fishing, fishing. There we go. Yeah. Fishing. Anything. Fishing, yeah, that NG fishing, sound yeah. in the back. So I think most of the time you have a really good NG. Let's just describe it for people who are listening and not seeing, right? Or they don't know how to do a good NG. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people might cut that off and they might say anything. Fishing. Not necessarily wrong, but it sounds a little bit like the person can't make the sound. So just for everybody else, what you want to do to make a good NG sound is grab the tip of your tongue, hopefully your hands are clean, and then use the back of your tongue to make the NG sound. Exactly. So anything. Fishing. Right? Fishing. Yeah, exactly. So so I just wanted to like reiterate that's what I'm looking for because your NG sounds really good, but I can't see inside your mouth. So I don't know what's going on in there. <laughs> and also to explain it for everybody else. So that's really good. Watch right. those Zs. Think about that syllable stress. Let's do this part again. Go for it when you're ready. You can create almost anything with those new AI tools. Tools. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Pope in a Balenciaga coat, easy. Darth Vader ice fishing check so i did uh, ice fishing without the g there <laughs> I tried again. okay dark vader ice fishing check nice a teddy bear made of spaghetti you got it spaghetti Second spaghetti, spaghetti. I have da, to remember da, da. exactly da, 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 da. and when you said right. oh i didn't do the g on fishing your correction just to know 
overdid it a little bit. Let me quickly say the difference between two words. Number one, person who sings is a sing singer, right? A singer. Sing, m, m, that NG in there. M, m. It's the back of my tongue. Singer. M, m. Singer. M, m. Singer. Singer. But since we're talking about hands, I have four fingers. Hear that G in there? It's like an extra G. Finger. Gur. Finger. I have singer, but I have finger. Gur. Can you hear the difference? Yeah, I can hear the, the difference. It's, it's subtle. But is it because singer is singular and finger are plural? Ah, that's an interesting thought, but it doesn't have anything to do with that. That would be nice, right? That'd be easy. But that's not the case. <laughs> <laughs> it's annoying because the spelling is basically identical in this part, right? So you wouldn't know this. And actually, I don't have the way to mark it, but I have finger. It's actually pronounced with two sounds. For example, if I were to go to the dictionary, dictionary.com, and I'm going to write S-I-N-G-E-R in dictionary.com, and I always want to press show IPA. Look, we've only got the one syllable here. Can you see that? Singer. I'm going to copy it. Singer. Singer. Yeah. Singer. It's one sound. Singer. It's the one we just wrote. But if I write the word finger in the dictionary, watch what happens here. I'm not going to just see that one symbol, that N with the hook. That's the M sound, right? And we know we said we just make it with the back of our throat. But here, you can actually see there's two. I'm going to copy and paste it onto our notes because it's not just the NG, right? L, 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 singer, singer. But technically, singer. I actually need a G in there. So I need the NG and then the G. Ng, ng, mm, Two see. separate sounds. Finger. Yes, exactly. Finger and exactly. singer. Does that idea make sense? The fact that you can't yeah, tell yeah, from yeah. the spelling, but there might actually be an NG only or an NG and a G. And that's what you did. You overcorrected. So you said, instead of fishing, you said fishing g. And I heard this really <laughs> popping g there. So just to say, like, it's possible to overcorrect that. And just to know that, like, you're not going to know, unfortunately. And it doesn't happen really at the end of the word. But sometimes in the middle of the word, when you've got an n and a g, sometimes it's just n, n. And sometimes it's n, g as well. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay, awesome, yes, awesome. Yeah. And tell me if this is all like too much information. No, no, no this is great. Okay, perfect, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So let's do this little sentence that you have here. And after we've done all the script, let's run through the whole thing as well. So, all right, give us this sentence from we often think to big limitation. We often think, also, often, uh, it seems to be a tough one for me. Either one. We often think that these technologies can do it all. But they all share one big limitation. Mm. That was really good. It seems like your brain was having a hard time deciding if I should say often or often, and either one's correct. So I would say mm. don't go through the trouble of trying to do a T there. Just drop it completely often, often, often. Hardly often. anybody does a T in there. So it's not wrong, but why bother yourself, right? And then watch out for this E versus I sound. Really important to the word this Singular versus these, plural. I, e, I, e, this, these, this, these. We definitely don't want to mix them. This, up. these. Mm -hmm. These, so, yeah. So the, uh -huh. the first one is this. Yep. Like, like, like singular. This, and mm -hmm. the, the, the plural one is these. Yes, correct. The, these, right. these, right. exactly. So there's that vowel difference between single and plural, but there's also that voicing difference we just did. So when it's singular, it's S like a snake. This, s, mm -hmm. this. this. And when it's plural, this. it's voiced. E, E, these. 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 Uh-huh. These. Yeah. So I'm going to mark that since we were talking about it earlier. These. These technologies. These technologies. These technologies. Right? Technologies. Uh-huh. And get, get that E in there as well. Ease. As in easy. Technologies. Uh, technologies. Mm -hmm. Technology. Mm -hmm. We often think Technology. that these technologies... Go ahead. Say that whole sentence again. We often, we often, it, it was often, right? Uh, often, yeah, you can just take that to your way. The easier one. Mm -hmm. We often think that these technologies, these, mm -hmm. these technologies can do it all. 
Yeah, very nice. Yeah, that sounds so much better. Perfect. And mm. then you have one word back here. They all share one big, we call this a short I, the I, I sound as in this, limb, limb, limitation, limit, limit, limitation. That sound is twice limitation. there. Mm -hmm. I don't want limitation. limitation. I want limb, limb, limitation. Oh, yeah. Limitation. There we go. Limitation. That syllable stress. Yep. Tay, tay. Limitation. 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 Mm -hmm. Also, I, I don't think that I did the, the stress right there. Limitation. Well, that's because we're just focused on the vowel. So it makes sense, right? I'm focused on this thing and I just kind of forget about the stress. That's fine. I just don't want to, we want, to want you to forget about it. So they all share <laughs> one big limitation. Give me that line again. Limitation. But they all share one big limitation. There we go. Limit, limit. Limi Relax your lips. Limit, limit, limitation. 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 Mm -hmm. limitation. There we limitation. go. Uh huh. And watch mm. that your i, that your jaw stays nice and tight. I, i, limb. I, Look, almost no space here. Limb. I, I, limb. Oh, so sorry. Like I'm worried that your jaw is opening a little bit and it's sounding like this. It's sounding like lem, limitation. I want mm. i, i, limb, limb, limitation. Limitation. Mm -hmm. Limitation. There we go. Limb limitation perfect perfect that, that's yeah. a tough one yeah <laughs> especially when we overthink it right <laughs> yes let's do both of these together we often think that these technologies can do it all but they all share one big limitation there we go limitation limitation mm -hmm. limitation and remember to keep this one long ease ease as an easy technologies technologies yeah there Tec we go technologies geez Yes. Uh, Are you a fan of Rick and Morty, the show? Yeah. <laughs> you know how, you know how Morty sure. always says, geez. Think of that. Technologies. Yeah. Technologies. There we go. Oh, Technologies. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. Okay, let's pause and let's go through what we have already. So let me highlight these three things that we've already done, and then we'll do the last part. So first, let's kind of consolidate what we already have. Start from the top, and I'll just scroll through the screen as you're going. See if you can remember all those so far. Okay, Photoshop, Mid Journey, Dolly, and a Stable Diffusion. You can create almost anything with those new AI tools. The Pope in a Balenciaga coat, easy. Dark Vader, Ice Fishing, check. A teddy bear made of spaghetti, you got it. We often think that these technologies can do it all. But they all share one big limitation. Limitation. Very nice. Yeah, very sorry, good. Is sorry. that feeling better now? Like, are you feeling a yeah, little yeah, more yeah. comfortable with the script? Awesome. To totally. And it's, oh, awesome. it's helping me make sense of, of every, like, the, the subtle differences. Like, we, we said earlier, like, comparing the E's and the us. Yeah. So those small differences are, like, really tough to, first, to notice, but it's so much easier mm -hmm. when you help me do this, right? Oh, oh, it's my pleasure. And it's... Something that a long time ago, I was thinking, how can I help people? Because I'm the kind of person who I'm just not very good auditorily, right? My oral and my listening skills are not great in other languages. And I know that the type of learner I am, I'm super kinesthetic. Like I have to hold things. I have to click things. I have to tap things. And I know for other people, they can just read something and it's fine, or they can just hear something and they got it. But I know that I need something visual. So I had some help in creating this app so that we could do it because I couldn't find anything like it online. And for me, as soon as I find anyways, I see that when I help people and I just make these marks on the app, which is free for anyone to use, by the way, then I can visualize it and people are like, oh, I see the difference, right? Maybe I couldn't hear the difference before, but now I see these two different things and I'm like, ah, oh, I see it and I can hear it now. So I, I feel like this has been a big step in helping people is to be able to to have this app available for everybody and you can use it so you can really s literally see what you're doing wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so it's such an awesome app. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, it's free for everybody. So it's just on GitHub. Yeah. So anybody can use this, by the way. And I have a little, like a five minute tutorial. So if somebody is an English teacher or they're just working on their own scripts, then they can do that. Here's the problem though. When you use a teleprompter or something like that, you may know that you don't have the versatility on a teleprompter that you would have in like normal, let's say writing a document. So this is not going to come through on a teleprompter. So you'd want to put it in the app, practice your script, 
And then when you have the script in front of you without all the marks, then hopefully you'll still remember those things. So that's one, let's use that word, limitation that we have here is that the teleprompter can't read this. But you could, I guess, put up a picture of it too and scroll through it on your own. Ooh, awesome. Okay, we got the last part here. Let's talk about hands. And by the way, you have a really good ah sound there. That's hard for a lot of people. So this is for everyone else. Your tongue is forward. Your jaw is very far open. Hands, hands, hands. And that's a really tough one because it's got an N next to it. And N is a nasal sound. So your jaw wants to close. And a lot of people might make the mistake, two mistakes. Number one, their jaw is too close. So it sounds like hens, hens, like chickens, hens, or their tongue is in the middle rather than in the front. And it sounds like Hans, Hans, but your a ah is really good. But just to clarify for other people, how do I make a good a ah sound? My tongue is forward and my jaw is very far open. So tell us about these hands. Awesome. Read this last part of your script from, let's say, from the word hands. Okay, hands. Actually, it's hands and poses. Mm. Just one little thing here. Just like your a ah and hands is really good, I'm going to mark what that should look like. I want it here to a ah, a ah, actually. Mm. Actually, actually, mm -hmm. hands, mm -hmm. actually. Hands, there we go. Actually. And I'm going to mark it here just because the word is here as well. Hands, actually, hands. And I think you got it, but just to keep it in the front of our mind, let's say poses. Those are both voiced poses. poses. Uh huh. And also this S in hands is actually a Z sound. So hands, actually, it's hands and poses. Tell us that line one more time. Hands and poses. Yep, and it's from the beginning and actually, all the way through. Okay, actually, it's hands and poses. Yeah, poses. perfect, 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 yes. Now, this next sentence is quite long. I want to break it up at this comma right here. So I'm just going to put that line underneath. So there's a comma in the word. So stop at the comma, start at these generative and end at features. These generative AI models for images have a difficult a difficulty with representing and generating hands and limbs as they haven't been trained enough on these features. All right. Okay. So we've done s and z. We've done sh and z. We did p, p, b, b. Now one more pair is t, t, d, d. So I'm starting backwards and I'm starting on this word train, d, d, d. And when trained. I think that, I want to hear it trained enough, trained enough. Mm -hmm. Trained enough. Perfect. Trained enough. There we go. Trained enough. Trained enough. Exactly. exactly. Trained enough. Mm -hmm. trained and we've got enough. this S in the middle of the word, but it sounds like a Z. Repres representing. Representing. Mm -hmm. Representing. Representing. <laughs> you sound like I'm a little confused here. Representing. Representing. <laughs> representing. There's going to be something here that I'm going to introduce the idea of. I don't think we've talked about it yet. Let's go to Longman Dictionary. The Longman Dictionary is for learners. Ah, perfect. It does have what I'm looking for. All right. Can you see where I'm highlighting right here? So I've got the word in the dictionary. Yep. Okay, so where I'm highlighting, if you ever look in, in a dictionary and you um, are looking at what we call IPA, which is the International Phonetic Alphabet, that's what we want to look at because that's going to tell me the vowels that I'm looking for. When I make these corrections on the app, I'm actually using IPA. I'm not stopping to teach you it, but because I think you'll just pick it up. There's another thing that they do in the dictionary, which is to show the stress. We have primary stress. Most words in English have just one stressed syllable. And in this case, in the dictionaries that use IPA notation to show you the pronunciation, they want to mark syllable stress with a little apostrophe almost. It looks like an apostrophe just before the syllable that's stressed. So in this case, zent, zent, da da da, represent, represent, represent. represent. There's another symbol at the beginning in this case, and it's not an apostrophe, but it's almost like a comma because it's down below. And that tells us that it's secondary stress. So this is a good example. And I know that your language is very advanced. Otherwise, I wouldn't bring it up. But I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to say represent, represent. I'm going to start in the middle, secondary stress. It's like halfway, repre, repre, represent. Can you hear the difference between those two? 
Yeah, yeah, I can okay, notice. Okay, cool, cool. Represent. So, uh-huh, represent. Repre, repre, represent, right? So I'm stressing represent. that first part a little bit, but not all the way, because it's not primary stress. The main stress is going to be on zen, zen. So I have to go the highest there. And I think that when it was rattling around in your brain a little bit, it sounded like you were questioning something. And I think that's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly. That's I'm just guessing about your brain here. So I'm going to mark representing, because there's no change there, representing, representing, I'm going to mark the primary stress with bolding and underline. And my convention to write secondary stress is just to bold that second one. So it's repre, repre, representing, representing. Representing. Perfect. Representing. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Uh, I noticed maybe that I have an issue there at the G, at the end of the word, representing. Oh, the NG? Uh-huh. Like what it we talked about before? It... Yeah, should this one end in G or... Just NG, NG, just plain old NG. That thing that we talked about, that happens when the NG is in the middle of the word. It's never mm, going to happen at the end of a word. So which one should it be? Ng or ng? Ng, I believe. Ah, so in this case, right? it's not going to be ng, just ng, ng oh. at the end. Because oh, it's at represent, the end, because it's, it's at the end. Mm, right, right. Uh-huh, only that represent. one. Represent. There we go. Representing. Representing. No, I, I feel like I have a problem with the T. Representing. Ah. Ting, ting. Here is just a regular old T. Representing, representing, okay. representing. Regular old T. Nothing special about it. We do have different variations of T, but that doesn't apply here. Yeah. Okay, representing, cool. Representing, representing. One more before we redo this one. And this is the O, letter O, which can be very tricky in English. There's like... 10 different sounds it could be. This one happens to be the ah as in box sound. So I don't want modals. I want ah, ah, models. Mm, models. There models, right? Models. I, I, models. I models. Generative there we go. AI models. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Generative AI models. I just realized yeah. there's a grammatical mistake here. So you said have a difficulty. We would not put that as a singular countable thing. Difficulties can be plural. Or we can oh, just say yeah. we have difficulty in general. It's not going to be singular mm-hmm. countable. It's going to be an uncountable thing. I can say some difficulties. I can say 13 difficulties. If I want to count them, I can put a number there. But I wouldn't say have a difficulty. So I just wanted to fix that mm-hmm. grammatical mistake for you. Is that okay? Yes, Bianca. Thank you very okay. much. Awesome. Awesome. All right. That's so let's start over. These generative AI mod- mod- models. Models. Uh-huh. I forgot. Tuck models. The back and then open jaw. Ma, models. Models. Mm-hmm. models. There we go. These generative AI models for images have difficulty with represent, with representing. I, I, uh-huh. I, representing. Representing. Represent. Have a di- have a difficulty with nope, represent. Take away the, uh, have difficulty. Have. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yep. Get rid of that A. Exactly. Understand. I'm going to put it like this for you. I'm going to cross out that silent E and I'm going to combine the V and the D. Let's combine those first. Vd. 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 There have we go. Difficulty. Have difficulty. Yes. Vd. Models for images have a difficulty. Oh, Ooh, see how you put in that little vowel in there? Take it, take it away. Vd. 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 There we go. Vd. Vd. Have Vd. difficulty. Yes. Difficulty. Have difficulty. Yep. <laughs> that's, that's tough. Have difficulty thing with representing. Eh? Repra, repra, representing. Oh, okay. Representing. Yes. And generating hands or limbs. I, I try to read it from mm-hmm. these generative AI model models for images have difficulty with representing and not generating... re, but re, re, repre. Oh, you've, been, yeah. you've been right all the way till now. <laughs> yep, you're just second guessing yourself. I think repre, repre, representing, representing and yes. generating hands or limbs as they haven't been through enough of of on these features. So. Yep. I'm going to move this down. Trained enough. Trained enough. Trained enough. Yes, exactly. Trained enough. Trained enough on these features. Trained enough on these features. Yes, that's Trained sounding enough really good. On these features. That That's a really long sentence. You might think about rewriting it in your script just to be make maybe two or three shorter sentences out of that. Just, just a thought, right? I'm not saying you have to, but it might be easier mm-hmm. since it's kind of challenging that one. So let's finish that sentence. Start with so asking. So asking them to, gen- to generate such images can lead to confusing or inaccurate results. Mm-hmm. Inaccurate. There we go. So a- a- asking, I'm going to mark that one. That could be a little more open. Asking. And then you w- wavered a little bit here. I'm going to mark that syllable stress. Generate, generate, generate. Generate. Uh, mm-hmm. 
you were a little bit too what we call long. You were saying e e images, not completely, but a little bit. So let's make it real short. I i images. Images. Yes. Images. 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 What was images. that word early? Limitation. Images. Limitation. Images. Yes. Limitation. Exactly. Images. You got it.、Mm -hmm. This one pop quiz is it an S or a Z confusing or confusing? The the second one I believe confusing. Yep, you're right. It's but, a Z sound. But、mm -hmm. I don't know <laughs> while I'm reading the line, like I forget. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's why we're making、it. notes here. So zing zing, and and feel free to put your hand on your throat and just check. Confusing, confusing. zing. I know it's, it's it's the spelling in English. There's an S there, so your brain wants to make a s sound, but really it's a Z there. Yeah, so it's not confusing. You, it's, English. it's for sure it's English. Okay, say this word again. Inaccurate. In okay, which syllable should be stressed there?、Uh, inaccurate. No, yeah, there you go. Yeah, I wanted you to guess. Uh huh. Inna, <laughs> inna, inaccurate, inaccurate. And since it's a longer word, we're going to check the dictionary and make sure that there's not secondary stress, since you already know about secondary stress. So if you if you sometimes feel like, oh, I don't know where the stress is, it could be that there's secondary stress on there. So it's always good to check. And as we said, primary stress has an apostrophe; it's a little hash mark that's up high, and a secondary stress has a hash mark that's down low, almost like a comma. Do you see one of those? Yes, of course, you see primary stress, <laughs> but we don't see secondary stress. So when、stress、we we can、right? check in the dictionary, and now we can say, oh, I don't need to question this in my mind anymore. I know there's only one inaccurate. Da 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 da、mm. da da da. Inaccurate. 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 Mm-hmm. And in the end of the word, am, am I pronouncing it right? Inaccurate,、oh, inaccurate. writ, like、uh, the words are written in the book. I, I, inaccurate, Ooh, inaccurate, inaccurate, inaccurate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and inaccurate. we can see that if we go back to the dictionary, we can see that short i, what we're calling short i, the i, i sound. Its、Ritz. symbol looks like a kind of a small capital I, right? Inaccurate it, like I ate it for dinner. Oh, did you leave some pizza? No, I ate it. For dinner, i i it. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Inaccurate. 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 Inaccurate.、Mm -hmm. Inaccurate. Yeah, and that's four syllables total. Da 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 da. Inaccurate. 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 There we Inaccurate. go. Inaccurate. 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 Perfect. Perfect. Okay, we have one more sentence here. So let's do this one whole sentence before we do the last one again. It's quite long. This generative AI mo models for images. Have difficulty with representing. A, right? a good one. Re representing. Representing and generating、mm -hmm. uh, hands or limbs as they haven't been trained enough on these features. Great. So asking them to generate such images、mm -hmm. can lead to using or inaccurate results. In oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, inaccurate no results. Yeah, you know why your brain is maybe doing that because it's seeing A T E and it's thinking, oh, yesterday I ate. Some pizza, so it's seeing that <laughs> ending, that a t e ending, and it's thinking like, oh yeah, I know how to do that. It's eight, but not it's it. So it's、inaccurate. the spelling again in English that's fooling you. That's all. So just drill that word a little bit. Inaccurate, inaccurate, accurate, inaccurate, accurate, inaccurate, inaccurate,、uh -huh. accurate. There you go. Inaccurate, really accurate. helpful. There we go. Yeah, just do that like five times a day, and you'll never make a mistake again. Okay, let's look at this last sentence. Then it goes from hands all the way to perfectly. Hands in particular are highly ver versatile. Versatile,、mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, keep going. Keep going. We'll fix it. Okay. Hands in particular. Hands in particular are highly versatile, capable of changing poses and fluidly. So it's a tougher problem to generate them. To generate them perfectly. There we go. I think that the reason that you had、uh, missed something there was because our text was a little too small.、Oh. Yeah. So let me. Yeah, yeah.、Uh, that was my fault. Let me move that down a little bit so you can see it more clearly. Read that sentence again, because I think you missed some words here. Okay. Hands in particular are highly versatile, capable of changing poses and angle and angles fluidly. So it's a tougher problem to generate to generate them perfectly. Yeah, that was way better that time. Awesome. You were kind of stuck on this word and maybe a little bit on this word. Let me make this bigger uh, again uh, so that we can see it more clearly. Okay, totally your choice. You can do per per, for example, one per person, per particular, per particular, or you can do p p 
particular. It's not often I say you can drop an R, but here you can because a lot of people are doing it. So two choices. Particular. 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 Either one. Particular. So the the first one was particular, like yep, er, yep. Er. Let me do them both again. They're both going to be the same vowel, and the vowel that you want here、mm -hmm. is the most common vowel in English. I don't think you and I have maybe discussed the name of it. It has a name. It's called schwa. Have we ever said the word schwa before? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, good.、We、so this is schwa.、Time. It sounds like this: uh, uh, p, 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 particular, p. particular, particular, particular. Like rolling the r there, it's like、uh, tougher. Yeah, you can either have the R there per per, like if I said one yeah, per, yeah. per person. Per,、mm -hmm. Particular. Yeah. So that that feels easier. Particular. Okay. Cool. Let's let's take that away then. So either choose, do it or don't do it. And so in this case, you said, oh yeah, I can do that R there. So per particular. Particular. There we go. Yeah. yeah if you're gonna、particular. do it, do it all the way. Particular. 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 Other word. I think you were kind of hesitant about this vowel at the end. So, what did you decide on? How did you want to say that word? Because there's two possibilities. Versatile? Is it like that? You're saying、versatile. till, till, right? I won't see you till Saturday, till. for example. So, if in doubt, check the dictionary. Dictionary.com is your friend. You can use whatever dictionary you want, but make sure you're looking at one that has IPA. So, can you see where I'm highlighting here? This T. L together. So let me talk about the way that the British would say it. Right? They'd say tail versus tail versus tail, or tile, tile versus tile. The British would often say versatile, and you'll get a lot of Americans who say that too. Even I say it sometimes, and sometimes they don't say tile like the tiles on the bathroom floor. They'll say tool, tool together. And I know that for Mexican Spanish speakers, this is really easy. Because one of the native languages here, one of the big native languages, is called Nahuatl. T L together, Nahuatl, Nahuatl,、mm. and they have a lot of words that have T and an L together. But I think a lot of other varieties of Spanish, they have a hard time with that T L together. So if that's difficult for you, in English, you can stick a little schwa in there too. So I'm going to write it like this: Tol, Tol, Tol. If you can't do Tol, 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 try Tol, Tol. Versatile, versatile, versatile. There you go. Where is the accent on this word? On the first one, versatile, for sure. On the first versatile, one, right? Versatile, versatile, versatile.、Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And again, versatile. we're in the dictionary. We're looking for that high mark in front of the syllable. So it's going to be right here. Versatile, 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 versatile.、Mm -hmm. Like that. Versatile. Uh huh. You can always listen to it in the dictionary. Versatile, 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 versatile. versatile. Can you hear how she goes? S. But she goes tool tool together, almost with no vowel in there. Tool tool. If you can do it, great. If you can't do it, just stick a little schwa in there and say tool tool. But syllable stresses on the first one. Versatile, 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 versatile. There we go. So we versatile. Get, we got two schwas in there if we want, right? Let me see if that's everything. Um, say the sentence again. Okay, hands in particular, per per particular, hands in particular are highly versatile. Versatile. Capable of changing poses and angles fluidly, so it's a tougher problem to generate them perfectly. Ah, see, that was great. So there weren't any more、um, corrections in there. We might just make sure that that is voiced. Angles, poses.、Oh, yeah. That was very clearly、Angle. voiced.、Mm -hmm. And sometimes、poses. it might be like somebody's microphone, and and maybe they are voicing, and I can't hear it. So that thing where you put your hand on there and just check. Angles, poses. Angles,、mm -hmm. poses. You can always. No, I'm probably、yourself. dropping. I have this like thing that where I try to drop every. The ends the of end. the word, the ends of the words. Yeah, but now you're gonna see them everywhere. So in general,、yeah. here's a rule for you. Not a rule. A rule of thumb. Let's say in general, in English, if there's a final s. Most of the time, it's voiced. The letter is S, but just go ahead and voice it. You're going to be right more often. So instead of trying to think, oh, should I voice it? Should it be an S or a Z sound? Just make it a Z sound, and you're going to be correct most of the time. So yeah, that's a little, yes, little shortcut、that's、for、great. you there. Okay, and then the difficulty comes in here. Remember, you did the word particular, ert, ert. That R and T together. We've seen this a couple of times. When we have two consonants together, we call it a cluster or a blend. And I'm gonna mark that in red because it's really difficult for our mouth. And here you've not only got angles, but you have got then an F and an L. So you've got Z F L Z F L Z F 
fool, bzz, fool, bzz, fool. That's kind of difficult, that cluster. So angles fluidly. Try to say that. Angles fluidly. Yeah, fluidly. that's a tough, tough one. Angles yeah. fluidly. Zfl, angles fluidly. Zfl. That's a tough one. So your connected speech is really good. Every once in a while, we've got these consonant clusters when we smash the words together. And we can point some of those out, too. For example, here, we've got tougher problems. So I've got RPR, er, pr, er, pr, tougher er, problem. Pra. Tougher problem. There we tougher go. There problem. we go. And when we kind of zoom in, on that connected speech, we can see, hey, did you do the last sound really well? I can hear that when we get good connected speech, right? So like we've noticed here, mm -hmm. generative AI, when I don't connect it, it's really easy to be lazy about it and drop that last sound. But if I have good connected speech, it's easy to point out and say, ah, you see that? You missed it. I want to make sure that we check your connected speech as well, because that makes a video sound better. Mm, I see, I see. Okay, awesome. Generative so, AI. Let's do the last part about hands, and then we'll do the whole script again, and we'll see if everything makes sense for you today, okay? Okay. Okay, I'm going to just highlight it first in yellow so we know that's part of your script and not part of our notes here. All right, go ahead. Let's do this whole part right now. Hands. Actually, it's hands and poses. These generative generative AI, mo AI models... models ma, ma, models. Uh, these generative AI models for images mm. have difficulty have difficulty with represent, representing Re and generating one. hands or limbs as they haven't been trained enough on these features nice so asking so ask asking oh, i forgot a asking yep. ask right? asking mm -hmm. so asking them to generate to generate such images images can lead to confusing to confusing to confusing or inaccurate inaccurate Good one. Oh, inaccurate. It, it. Inaccurate. Mm -hmm. Inaccurate results. It. There you go. There yeah. we go. But the great part is that I feel like I'm beginning to notice and then I can stop it right there and yeah. practice that part like a Yeah, already. Times. You're already like, oh, wait, wait, I can fix that. Oh, it's too late. Okay, next time. <laughs> you can notice it, right? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Nice job. Let's do the last line and then we'll do all of it together from top to bottom. Hands in particular, particular are highly highly versatile 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 mm -hmm. versatile mm -hmm. capable of changing poses and angles fluidly there we go so it's mm -hmm. a tougher problem to generate them perfectly there we go nice mm. angles fluidly i'm going to remark angles fluidly angles, angles fluidly, fluidly. <laughs> there we go. All right, now we're going to try it from the top to the bottom, the whole script. Maybe we'll run it two or three times. If you feel like, oh, I'm about to miss it, just just pause, just stop and do it over, right? No big deal. You don't have to, you know, apologize or think anything of it. When you notice, stop and redo it. That's really, really important. Okay, so from the top, tell us about Photoshop and Midjourney and all these things. Photoshop, Midjourney, Dolly, and Stable Diffusion. You can create almost anything with those new AI tools. The Pope in a Balenciaga coat? Easy. Darth Vader ice fishing? Check. A teddy bear made of spaghetti? You got it. We often think that these technologies, these technologies can do it all. But they all share one big limitation. Limitation. But they all share one big limitation. Limitation. Hands. Actually, it's hands and poses. These generative AI models, models, Good. sorry, models for images have difficulty with represent, with represent. Hmm, I forgot that one. There representing, Rep or representing, or representing, representing. Oh uh, yeah, these generative AI models for images have difficulty with representing and generating and generating and generating hands or limbs as they haven't been trained enough on these features. Trained enough, trained mm. enough on these features. So asking them to generate such images can lead to confusing or inaccurate inaccurate mm -hmm. results. Hands in particular in particular are highly versatile are highly versatile, capable of changing poses and angles fluidly. And angles fluidly. 
and angles fluidly. <laughs> Shinji imposes and angles fluidly. So it's a tougher problem to generate them perfectly. Yeah, there we go. Virtual <laughs> high five. Nice job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's getting better. Yes. It's getting better. Yeah. This is, a, a, I would say it's a technically challenging um, script to run through. Plus, we found like a million things to talk about. I'm just going to put the little notes that we have maybe at the top or the bottom so we can read through it all at once so we don't have to have uh, as much trouble scrolling through here. Let's try it a little bit faster this time. How's that for you? Yeah, that's great. Okay, cool. Let's do it a couple more times so you feel really confident and comfortable. And now I'm just going to unhighlight all that because I feel like it's um it's a bit much on the eyes. So let's take that away. And now let's reread it. Okay. Oh, I want to show you something okay. too. So in this app, we've been making all these notes, right? So I put in a feature where, watch this, it's like magic. I can say, you know what? Eh, it's just too much on my eyes. It's kind of confusing me. Or maybe I don't need that anymore. So on the side, you might not be able to see it where I'm sharing my screen, but on the on the left side, there's a little eyeball. And if you click on the eyeball, boom, it hides mm -hmm. all those marks. So you may or may not want them. In this case, I just hid all of the pronunciation. Now watch, I can hide all the syllable stress, right? I can hide the connections so that they're not there. Let's do this as kind of like a final exam. I'm going to hide all the marks... And then let's see what you remember. Okay? How's that? Okay. That's okay. great. Um, yes. All right. So the only thing that's left is this bold on representing. I don't want you to think that that's the primary stress, but that's because um, when we do this, we can't hide that. So I'm going to just take it away. Okay. So now you don't see any of the notes. For people who are just listening, I want to say we've gone back to the original script. There's no notes on here. It's going to be like a final exam for today. Let's see how much you can remember and then we'll put the notes back on and we'll read it through again with you looking at the notes. So let's do it. Photoshop Mid Journey Dali Stable Diffusion. You can create almost anything with those new AI tools. The Pope in a Balenciaga coat, easy. Darth Vader ice fishing, check. A teddy bear made of spaghetti, you got it. We often think that these technologies can do it all, but they all share one big limitation. Hands. Actually, it's hands and poses. These generative AI models for images have difficulty with representing and generating hands or limbs as they haven't been trained on enough. Oh, sorry, as they haven't been trained enough on these features. So, asking them to generate such images can lead to confusing or inaccurate inaccurate results. Hands, in particular, in particular, particular are highly versatile capable of changing poses and angles fluidly and angles fluidly so it's a tougher problem to generate them perfectly hey that was awesome how do you feel about that <laughs> i feel i feel much better but i noticed that like i am still stuck on some words but i i know it's only a matter of practicing and trying to repeat it and repeat it like 100 times Totally, totally. Go easy on yourself. It's only been like a half an hour that we've been doing this, so not bad at all, right? Yes. Okay, let's put all those things back on there. That's a little bit more, how should we say, visually stimulating this time. Let's see if there's anything that you recognize that time that you might have forgot. There was definitely one thing that I thought, oh, I think you know that one. And it is... Was it generate? Now I don't know. Generate? Now I don't know. Let's see how you do. It was one word that stuck out of all of these, and I can't I can't find it now. I think because I stuck in all the notes again, and the text kind of jumps around when you do that, and so now I'm, I'm having a hard time finding it. But let's run it from the top again, this time with all of our notes again, and let's say, this okay. time if you make a mistake, I'm going to stop you, okay? Because now if it's in front of you, you've done it a few times, there shouldn't be any mistakes anymore. Are you ready? Okay, let's do it. Photoshop Mid Journey Dali Stable Diffusion. You can create almost anything with those new AI tools. The Pope in a Balenciaga coat, easy. Darth Vader ice fishing, check. Ice fishing, check. <laughs> a teddy bear made of spaghetti, you got it. We often think that these technologies can do it all, but they all share one big limitation. Hands. Actually, it's hands and poses. Actually, it's hands and poses. These generative AI models, models for images have difficulty with representing and generating hands or limbs as they haven't been trained enough on these 
features. So asking them to generate such images can lead to confusing to confusing or inaccurate inaccurate results. Hands in particular are highly versatile, highly versatile, capable of changing poses and angles and angles fluidly. Changing poses and angles and angles fluidly. So it's a tougher problem to generate them perfectly. There you go. And sometimes when we do like scripts and we run it a couple times, we say, you know what? I can make my life a lot easier by just changing some of these words. So if you find that saying angles fluidly, you just want to change the word fluidly to something else, then go for that, right? Just do whatever is easier for you because you don't need to be thinking about that too much. You don't need to let it distract you. So if you want to change the script, go ahead. And I think that that's like the most valuable thing is to just start recording yourself, you know, just start doing it and you're going to improve for sure. And in this case, I added a couple of extra things. So that was really, really well done. I added a red mark here on accurate writ because that's the one that keeps getting you, keeps catching you. So I wrote it in red. And remember, you can undo all these notes. And ah, this one. Remember how we did this and these, this and these? Mm -hmm. This, these isn't quite as clear as it could be. And I know you know the difference now. So I'm just going to mark it in red so that when you read it, you remember these, 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 right? And in the meantime, just keep adding words to your list of vocabulary that you just happen to find and you want to review. And we'll start that first thing next time. My thought was, you know, there's going to be a lot of vocabulary here in the script that you have. So I wanted to start with the script today. I hope that's okay. No, this was so, this was so revealing. And, and as I said last time, the, the best part for me is like watching exactly where I, I am, like not perfectly pronouncing it and having this tool and having you helping me do this is is like super super cool so thank you so much Bianca yeah awesome it's like magic right I think yeah the visualizing thing like physically actually visualizing it with your eyes is really important so if anybody's listening to the audio version of this the YouTube video version of this podcast episode is going to be available in the show notes so if you're a visual kind of person and most of us are then make sure you watch that in YouTube so you can see exactly what we're talking about as that happens because my hope is that you, Miguel, and everybody else, after a while, it's going to be like me, Bianca, I'm sitting there on your shoulder, kind of whispering in your ear. <laughs> when we took away all the marks, I, I'm willing to bet you kind of saw them in your head. And you were like, oh, yeah, there's a little thing there. And oh, yeah, mm-hmm. I remember that that was red or something like that. So my hope is that that just strengthens the the neural connections in these corrections. So it's easier to remember and correct yourself every time. 100%. <laughs> Awesome. Cool. So in the meantime, I want to say thanks, Miguel, for doing this. And thanks for letting people kind of come with you on your journey and see your mistakes. It's very vulnerable, very brave of you to do this. And it helps a lot of people. So thanks for doing this. No, thank you so much, Bianca. And thank you, everyone that's listening. And yeah, like it's like a very, very cool way to learn things to to like be on the spot and and also having someone as great as you coaching you. I, I am I am very happy. Yeah. Oh, yay. I'm happy. I'm happy to call you a friend and happy to call you a client as well. So we'll say <laughs> thanks to everybody listening and we'll see you next time. See you next time. Bye, guys. See you soon. Thanks for listening in. My hope in recording and sharing these real one-on-one sessions is that since you might share the same frustrations that Miguel has, you also get to feel the same triumphs as he does as he gets better and, as a result, more confident. I know that some people are a little anxious or they don't know what to expect from accent coaching, but now you get a sense of what it's like to be a real client of mine. You deserve to sound just as clear and knowledgeable as you actually are, and you deserve to speak confidently. Be like Miguel and start today. Choose from once a month, every other week, or even weekly one-to-one accent coaching sessions, because as I like to say... Your voice is your choice, and I'll even throw in a free assessment. Join directly on my website or on my Patreon. And if you're not ready to commit to one-on-one sessions, join my free monthly masterclass to see how it is. In just two hours, you're going to master a specific American accent skill, like the THs or the dark L or rhythm. And all you have to do is sign up to my mailing list, and you'll get the registration link each month. The links are in the show notes. I'm Bianca, your personal American accent coach. Please don't forget to rate and review this podcast because it really helps me more than you might think. Thanks again for listening. Bye for now.